224 of the Nikon uh, has become a big issue. Have you wondered why it's become such a flashpoint? Well, Mr. Harper is trying to distract through the politics of division and fear. It's pure politics. Can you reverse? My name is Ray Stapleton. I'm a retired school teacher. A few years back, I got wind of the project called the Never Forgotten National Memorial. We would have the largest memorial in Canada to our, our uh, fallen veterans, and I thought it was a great idea. So right here on, on the left, that's where the statue Mother Canada will be. And she'll be pointing basically in this direction towards Vimy Ridge in France. There's more than likely to spot right here. I ended up becoming spokesperson for the group north of Smokey, who's in favor of the monument. Smokey's the, the, the uh, mountain in the background, mm -hmm. about a 45 degree angle. Where are the people north of Smokey? Mm -hmm. We started to hear about it before it went public. And the response was crazy. Everyone in the community was like, really, this would be the best thing ever? There's not much here but tourism. Our community alone is just surviving. So this will be such a big boost. I think it'll be a, an amazing thing to see. Stayed here, born and raised. Lobster fish for 30 years now. So I know what it is to struggle through the seasonal work, and I support anything that will give these communities a boost and keep people here. Tony Trigiani, who is a Toronto businessman, he was visiting his people back in Italy, and he saw their uh, gravestone. He was a Canadian boy. And this is why he came up with the idea of this memorial. We can't return them in body, at least we can return them in spirit. I have a brother who has served 35 years in the Canadian military. There he is here. He's getting the Medal of Bravery from Governor General Romeo Laurent. Unfortunately, a victim of PTSD. That's my brother Ken's. Part of his remains were, were in that, eh? I'm so proud that he picked such a small little town to have such a big dream for all our fallen veterans. But when it did hit the public, it created quite a bit of controversy. The plan to build an 80-foot monument honoring Canada's war dead at Cape Breton Highlands National Park has stirred up quite a bit of opposition. In fact, it's almost stormier than the sea over which it would tower. There's the mentality of build it and they will come. We're not against a memorial, we're against the memorial in the National Park. It seems so out of whack with everything that Parks Canada has stood for. And as you can see, the rocks here are pretty incredible. It would be a shame to see all of this paved over. I appreciate the value of parks and protected areas, and they are worth standing up for. The naysayers said it's going to be covering over all the rock. It's not. It's only on top of the rock. But there was a lot of, I believe, a lot of nonsense that the naysayers that, I guess, were coming up with. That's when the media started making it twice as worse. You are a Nova Scotian. You know that in, in the Maritime Provinces, if you don't get the locals behind you, you got a yeah. problem. You got a problem with this. No. The locals uh, are against it. Well, certainly not the locals in, uh, in Cape Breton. Most of the local community is for it. We have almost a thousand signatures now. Mother Canada will be situated right out here, basically. Wow. So what do you think the likelihood that this will actually come to pass? It's going to be here on Canada's 150th birthday. What? Mother Canada. Oh, no. Is that here? That's where it is. Oh, no. Oh, you're not saying, oh, no. No, I did hear about Yet? No, I'll have 
for us, the fishing industry is hit and miss because we only have uh, nine weeks of a lobster fishery. And if this comes here, there'd probably be uh, 300,000 plus visitors a year, make this area a little more prosperous. I think it's a great thing. I think the people that are against it are short-sighted. They say they're gonna do damage to the rock to put the monument there. And I mean, it's a rock, you know, wake up, it's a rock. Yeah, we're coming up onto it here. This is Great Cove right here. My great grandfather and my grandfather fished out of here, you know. It's a beautiful location, I think. You know, people forget that that monument is here and people are coming year after year. People aren't going to forget. I mean, we respect the Armed Forces and what they do, and at least we can do is show a little bit of recognition. All of us really care about the veterans, but you don't have to destroy a section of the National Park to do that. This development has no relevance to Green Cove. That's where my great-grandmother was from. When the park was established, our family was expropriated. And I do think it's a bit of a shame that that, that part of the site's history has never really been told, and now may never ever be told if the monument goes through. Because, you know, if you have to realize, this is Park Scanda, but where did this land come from? Like, it was privately owned property, the fishermen fished there. Park came in here and took the land, gave them little or nothing for it, you know? That's all we stayed within the community from generation to generation, so. There's a lot of bad blood there. I'm not a big park lover, but Green Cove is what he wants. That's what Tony wants. That's where his dream came, and that's where he wants it. The Parks Canada Act says that the parks were created for the use of the people. They are not to be ecological reserves to be set aside for just to look at were to be used. And like he said, if it's not going to be there, it's not going to be anywhere. We were the original firm working with Tony. It meant a lot to Tony that, that we can't forget. Well, once a decision was made that Green Cove was going to be the site, we started to look at a type of memorial and the land spoke to us. We gotta do something that's minimal and simple. And Tony really liked that idea. This was the original sketch, a, a ring. And then the point, this place of reflection. It's a very minimal imprint on there, but filled with metaphor and symbolism. Unfortunately, as it developed, we discovered that the statue was in the back of Tony's mind all along, and that any concept that would be chosen would have to have a statue in it. We're much more into contemporary design, which is dealing with a different approach to remembrance. You don't have to have just a big weeping statue. It was never a focus for our design. This was Tony's passion, and we tried to work with it. It just kept growing and growing. Five to six meters, eight to 10 meters, 14 to 16 meters, and then beyond that, you know, we'd advise him as much as possible, but he, he was on a mission, and nothing could stop him. Uh, yeah, it's true. It was a difficult time. We had many discussions and debates. And we couldn't agree with this massive intervention on that site. Eventually, it became Tony with the, with the rendering technician. It was unbelievable. Through the Facebook page, we rallied together to set up a town hall. As soon as I heard they were happening, I got in my car and I drove the six hours to get here. Place was packed. The people who spoke against the uh, proposal uh, were jeered somewhat subduedly uh, when they uh, got up to have their say, but everybody had a chance to speak. The way that the people who were opposed to the monument were being treated, 
made me a bit ashamed. I spoke even though people were booing and hissing. There are lots of local people who are opposed to this monument, but they will not speak up because they fear reprisals. The majority of people that spoke against it were come from a ways. That's what we call the people that are, are not from the local area, come from a ways. <laughs> they can't pull the CFA card on me because I was born and raised here. I don't think that Trigiani or Lewis McKenzie realize how divided the community is. When I come home, I don't feel as welcome as I once did. They don't like the name naysayers. Wow, naysayers are people that oppose, right? That's So they came up with a friendlier version, Friends of Green Cove. Do you believe, General, that most people are for this, that it's a vocal minority that is against it? I do, and I congratulate the vocal minority because they're extremely well organized. The day-to-day -day press work has fallen to me and it's a contribution I'm happy to make. I'm Sean Howard. It's been a great honour to be part of this amazing group in this nerve-wracking campaign that I think we're going to win. The most important contribution we've made as a group, I think, is to nationalise the issue. There was supposed to be a public consultation meeting and what it was was a pep rally. If there'd been proper public consultation, I think the project probably would have faltered I and mean, it wouldn't have been a need for, for Friends of Green Cove. If we feel that there's an active ecological vandalism that's being perpetrated on a national park, there are members of our group that feel very strongly about that and would take a stand. Early on, the attempt was to paint us as anti-veteran. Oh, you're not a proud Canadian, or you're not in favour of the military, or you're not in favour of the veterans. Nonsense, really, that kind of one-dimensional nationalism. I think it's just a slap in the face to the veterans. Mm -hmm. I think it's so disrespectful. The excuses, why they yeah. don't want... To protect the rocks, nature. protect the trees. And there's not a whole lot of nature there to protect, in my view. I'm Sandra Barr. I've been coming here for almost 40 years. I just couldn't believe it was a, a serious idea. This is a geoheritage site. It's a very important site for geologists. That's why we've got people here today from all across the country. I don't know how she ever got to be a geologist. I mean, I taught earth science in grade seven and eight, and my kids would, would I, they could actually put down her arguments. They, I mean, it's, it's ridiculous. Mm -hmm. I think, if you scratch the surface, I think Tony himself designed this. And I think it, it's like the Vimy Memorial stretched out 10 times, and it now has arms that reach out like this. Um, it, you know, I'm, I'm not going to comment on the statue other than it's not to my particular taste. Canada Bereff, that's over there, she's slouched down in sorrow. Mother Canada here is opening her arms up, saying it's okay tell them to come home. That's the whole story behind it. Retired Major General Lou McKenzie calls the controversy around this project irritating, but he says they are moving forward. This will be built. It will be started by our birthday in 2017, and these bumps along the way we will deal with. When we first heard about it, it was the never forgotten National Memorial. Then we noticed in the press this creeping mention of Mother Canada. I reached out to Tony and said, can you put a stop to this? Because this is a dishonor to a mother Canada in France. You can call yours whatever you want, but don't take a moniker that's already in use. In response to this, a letter was from a law firm saying that mother Canada had been trademarked and, it, and so now it could be used for trinkets and t-shirts. So you guys should back off and uh, you should stop calling your statue mother Canada. We were just flabbergasted by this, like, what are you talking about? So I've tried probably with three letters and telephone calls maybe five or six times over the previous past three or four years. Um, I've never heard from him. All I've heard from is his lawyers. 
telling us not to use the term Mother Canada. Everything in the shop is trademarked. Mm -hmm. Do you know why we have to do that? Because the government obliges us to have a maintenance fund for the, for the life of the statue. So every penny that comes from that shop will be part of the $4 million maintenance. Is there anything potentially disrespectful about some of these trinkets? that are being proposed? Absolutely, absolutely not. They're, they're sold at Vimy in France. Uh, these things will be of very high quality. As far as I'm concerned, they're commercializing veterans. <whistles> I wouldn't want that monument anywhere, let alone in Green Cove. Won't you permit that? They've set a precedent it would have consequences for every national park in Canada. The thing is, the foundation's still trying to raise the funds, but they can't do any more fundraising until the park releases their environmental assessment. Their hands are tied until the park starts it. Tony Trigiani himself is pretty much funding the site up to this point. There have been reports in the papers that he spent over a million dollars on the project. My wife and I, we signed up for a $5,000 donation spread out over a certain number of years. Eh? It's always good to put your money where your mouth is, too. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Information Morning All Candidates Forum. The questions are going to be determined by random draw. So if you want to ask a question, make sure you get your name on a ballot. We'll put it in the hat and we'll get going in about uh, 15 minutes from now. With the present Harper government, any hour now as we sit here, Parts Canada could be being forced to approve it before the election. So it's extremely nerve-wracking. It could slip away very, very soon. Are you ready to talk politics? We're going to draw a couple more names right now. Patricia Morrison of Sydney. Pam O'Day. Suzanne McNeil. Would you like to ask a question? All right. I'm going to reach in. We're going to draw one more name, uh, reaching into the hat for another questioner. And this questioner would be Sean Howard of Manadou. Sean, are you here? I assume you'd like to ask your question. Do the candidates believe that the proposed Mother Canada development will preserve the ecological integrity of the Cape Breton Highlands National Park, and that after concrete is poured over it, Green Cove will remain healthy and whole. Thank you very much for the question. Mark Iking of the Liberals, we'll start with you. You have one minute. I think, number one, we should welcome any private investment in Cape Breton when it comes here. I've yet to find many people here in Cape Breton who are opposed to the idea. I don't think any rock should be turned up there or the place should be touched till after the election. Our government has taken action. The public review process was too short. The Conservatives made a mess of that one. We have to remember the sacrifices of men and women who put their lives on the line for this country. They laid down their lives for freedom. It's been central to Conservative government agenda since they took office to recast the image of this country as a warrior nation. And for that reason, we have to have a kind of society that's constantly paying deference to the military and to war. That's a principle of this brand of conservatism. It's propaganda is what they're sending up there, protecting Green Cove from the culture of war. What they're trying to do is take the military out of Canadian history. If you question it, it becomes very suspect. It becomes unpatriotic to be anti-war. That's dangerous. I think this is a country that's uh, committed to remembrance. And the question is, what kind of remembrance? Canada has been hit by a red wave. The Liberal Party has completed a stunning turnaround, going from third place and 34 seats in the last parliament to power. Justin Trudeau will be your next prime minister. Once the Liberals got in and the fact that their MP was re-elected and that he was in favor of it, uh, we thought that this was going to be a done deal. It was all just an election ploy. It didn't go, it didn't go the way we wanted it to. 
The Mother Canada project will not be going ahead in the Cape Breton Highlands or any parks Canada land for that matter. The government agency has pulled its support of the controversial war memorial. We certainly think that if the Conservatives had been re-elected, they probably would have made sure that Parts Canada would have approved the scheme uh, and uh, construction would be starting probably by the end of November. I felt that let everyone down when the park backed out. I shouldn't have got their hopes up so high. This is a horrible situation. It's a shameful situation and the Prime Minister should do something about it. That's where he wants it, that's where we'll keep fighting for it. Nothing we can do. Listen, we're in this forever.